everybody has a story. And if you listen to them long enough, they will tell you their story. Yeah. Now, when you're the one telling the story, do you want people to simply hear you or do you want them to learn a lesson? Let's talk about it. Hello, I'm Christine Harper. And I'm Ernie Davis. And we're from Powerhouse, Powerhouse Motivations. Motivations. And we're Woo! glad to be here today. Today, we're really talking about when somebody starts to tell you their story, what is important in that telling that makes a person want to listen or makes a person learn the lesson? Oh, that's, that's going to be good because that's extremely important. What makes a person want to listen? What, what makes them listen? You know, you're giving your presentation. People are falling out. They're falling asleep. They're pulling out things. What do they? What do they have to do, Miss Harper? You got to help us on this one. We're gonna make gotta, this good. You got to give them something that they can find of value. And one of the ways that you do that is by continuing to grow your own skills. Because, like I said, everybody has a story, and somebody already told you, "Oh, that's interesting. That's good." People want to hear that. Yeah. But how can you grow? How can you continue to expand your awareness so that you can better share your story? That is, that's so, that's so big. You know, how do you, how do they, how do you do that? You know, I want to help everyone. You're watching right now. I want to help you. And Ms. Harper, we want to help you because that is so important. How do you continue to expand and grow and, and become an even better and more prolific public speaker? How do you get to motivate people? How do you stand up and sell your products and services in a way that's going to get people to act? One How of the first you things you have to recognize is that everyone who is a winner in this game of life is also a lifelong learner. Ooh, now, when I, like I first that. heard that, I was like, what? Do I have to I keep like going that. to school? Do I have to Christine, you reminded me of something. You know, I'm, a, I'm an urban guy. I'm an old guy. You know, I came up in the, in the area of hip hop, you know, and this young guy from, he's from New York. I think he's from your part of town, probably up there in New York. Guy by the name of James Todd we, Smith. We used to call him LL Cool J, right? And oh, LL Cool J, you know, I'm, I, I'll never remember, I'll never forget growing up. I heard him one time. I'm watching him. He gave a quote. He said, stay focused start out with the end i you know i like to say start with the end in mind what type of speaker do you really want to be what type of speaker do you want to be and for me I, I utilize that and i let that help me to guide my my journey you know if we have more time i tell you i'll tell i'll tell everyone how you know way back you know i gave my first presentation in 1997 you know and someone walks up to me and says hey and i was actually an old senior chief i was in the, in the united states navy back then he says hey you should, you ever thought about becoming a motivational speaker? Christine, that started the wheels to turn and it started some things going off in my head. You know, that was in 1997. A few years later, I'm working at the United States Naval Academy training some of the greatest speakers and leaders in the world. And guy walks up to me, a friend, he says, he says, hey, chief, have you ever thought about Toastmasters? This is about 2004, 2005, actually, I think it was. And so the wheels, once again, they start turning, right? And there's something, you know, I thought I was a good speaker. We all do. Yeah, we, we all think that we're good, right? And I didn't know how to take that at the time. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. we're in corporate America, we're in the United mm -hmm. States military, we're in the government, and we think that we're good. And then someone, some little young fellow comes up and says, hey, have you ever thought about Toastmasters? That's an interesting point because my first speech was in fifth grade. I was in a contest uh -huh. with uh, people in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and I came in fourth place. Mm -hmm. And I remember people giving me a lot of accolades and saying, oh, you're a great speaker. You should continue along that path. Keep learning public speaking. That was the part that I kind of didn't hear. Uh -huh. Keep learning about public speaking. Yeah, keep learning. So even when you got something that works, that people want to hear, you have to keep expanding your awareness, expanding your skills, mm -hmm. and expanding your knowledge about whatever subject you're talking about. Because sometimes you think you know, you think you know it, but yeah, technology sometimes. changes, things, the world changes. You got to keep up. They always, they always change, you know, and I think the first thing you had, you, you said, and you know, I, I love to give you guys a list. I love to make a list to make it simple and easy. So I would say the number one thing that I just got from what you said, Christine, was continue to expand your knowledge base. But you know, once you 
sometimes, you know that old saying that says, sometimes you just don't know what you just don't know. <laughs> you know, so why don't we share some resources? Why don't we, I'm gonna share, let's share some resources with everyone who's watching today to tell them, you know, you know, because I think my, start, my strategy has started out, you know, working in the government and then the military and, you know, just they sent you a, a lot of different public speaking classes. And now that I've been doing this for over 20 years, I know that none of them were really great. They were the worst. And I kind of realized that around about 2014, 2013, at the end of 2013, I realized that none of those schools were really great because I started to witness people who were making thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars as speakers. Some of them were motivational speakers. Some of them were product speakers. Some of them were IT professionals who were speaking on their their their, their, their niche in their industry. Mm -hmm. And some of them were even professional speakers speaking at government sy government symposiums and conferences. And they were making hundreds of thousands of speakers. And I started to research them to figure out what are they doing different? What's so different about them and the person who walks works down the hall in the training department? What's so different? Because the person at the training department, they're giving training all day and they're speaking, but they're not making any money. They're making their paycheck and they're barely keeping their job. But these other folks I saw, they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm wondering, what did they do? So, so I have an idea about that. What, what? Uh, before I said, you have to expand knowledge about your subject, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever your subject matter is, you keep growing and learning about it. But in addition to that, you can keep growing and learning about different techniques that public speakers use. Yeah. People think this is, you know, oh, I'm good, I'm cute, this is going to work. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> not, when it, not when it comes to really, really getting people to invite you into their organization to give speeches. Yes. Not when it comes to, you know, somebody bringing you to the Georgia Dome. I watched Les Brown one time. Mm -hmm. In the Georgia Dome, that thing, is, it's huge. For anybody who's ever been down there to Atlanta, that thing is huge. He had it sold out. They paid him a whole lot of money. And what I did on my journey, and I'm going to share this with everyone. I'm going to share this with, with you today. What I did is I tried to get better on my own. I purchased a book. You know, I purchased a book, you know, about public speaking, and it didn't work so well. It was a great book. I can't remember the author right now, but it didn't work so well. And it was all one-on-one -on -one by myself. And then I had a flashback. And this was in 2013. I had a flashback to 2004, 2005, when that young guy at the Naval Academy invited me to Toastmasters. I heard him talking about improving my public speaking. Back then, I, got, I was kind of, didn't know how to take that. I kind of, I kind of got butt hurt and thought he was trying to say <laughs> I needed to improve. I did. I should have listened. But I yeah. took him up on that. And in 2014, I joined Toastmasters. And Toastmasters, you, you, I think you've had some experience with Toastmasters. Toastmasters, it was a great organization. Uh -huh. uh, I remember one of my high school friends mentioning Toastmasters and saying how great an organization it was and how she enjoyed it. So at some point, I found out that there was a Toastmasters in my neighborhood mm -hmm. in the evening, low cost investment. I said, hey, let me go check this out. Mm -hmm. And once I got there, I liked it. Nice people. Um, and they started to talk about, I'm almost going to say weird stuff, things that I would have never, like somebody gave a speech one time about coffee. Yep. Now, I'm a big coffee drinker, but uh -huh. I had never thought about all the aspects of coffee and how the coffee is made and the type of coffee presses that are used. And so I said, okay, maybe this is where I need to be. Just come yeah. here and expand yeah. my awareness. That's, so. That's it's interesting because the next point I wanted to make was about resources. Yeah. There are many resources you can use to continue learning and growing. Sometimes people think you can only learn by going enrolling in a community college class or an advanced uh, education class. Mm -hmm. But going to an organization like Toastmasters, going to get books at your public library. I love Toastmasters too. And I thought it was a, I thought it was great when I first got there and I got to see a lot of people. I met people who had been in the program for 25 and 30 years. And I'm starting to smile. These guys are, they're good orators. Mm -hmm. Why aren't they getting paid? They're great orators. And why is it taking them 25 years? And you know, I was, I was, I was still young and I said, I didn't wait. I didn't want to wait 25 years. I didn't, I didn't want to wait 25 years to finally get paid as a public speaker. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I'm always, I've always been curious. I've always been curious. And so I started to visit different present, different speakers around the country. I would go to seminars. I would go to conferences. And I would go primarily to evaluate the speakers. You know, 
it, it resulted in me writing this little book here, Christine. I got to tell you, 11 Steps to Powerful Presentations and Public Speaking. I did so much research. You know, I probably spent thousands of hours. I, I didn't keep an actual log, but I probably spent thousands of hours just researching and trying to figure out why some people in this program is taking them 25, 30 years and they're still not getting paid. But other speakers, they've discovered something. And now they're making thousands of dollars. They get $10,000 per presentation. They're making $20,000 a presentation. Even the ones who are just starting out, they're making like two and $3,000 a presentation. I was like, I have to figure that out. So, so got, something about learning. Now, yeah. you know, if you have somebody to guide you, it can yeah. make it a little bit smoother. Somebody yeah. to, to show you the path that will help you discover what it is you need to be focusing on. So yeah. that's, you know, that's a good... That's exactly what I discovered. That's exactly what I, what I discovered. You know, and I joined a, a different program where I paid about 10,000 bucks to join an organization called the John Maxwell team, right? I, and to go into a speaker training program there. But then once I got there, I figured, I figured out that you know, this is a great, this is also a great program. I paid 10,000. I was like, you know, but I wanted that one-on-one -on -one attention, just like you're saying. If you could have that, there's nothing like that one-on-one -on -one attention. And I figured by paying like another seven, eight thousand bucks, I could get that one-on-one -on -one attention. But I tell you, I want to help. I want to help everyone who's watching. The thing that I didn't know then is that there are regular people like me and you, Christine, our team, right, the folks that we work with, who are willing to work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, who can coach you for a fraction of the price. You know, sometimes I just wish that I knew the things that I didn't know. If I follow the steps that you're giving out here today, continue to expand your knowledge base. Mm -hmm. Use the available resources, those books, those libraries that you're talking about. Toastmasters is a great start. John Maxwell team's a great start. But I think the ultimate, the ultimate one-on-one -on -one coaching. I, one -on -one I agree. One -on -one coaching, you know? I agree. Because a one-on-one -on -one coach is going to listen to you, what yeah. you have to say, listen to you tell your story, Mm -hmm. and then help you through how to tell a better story. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what they do. You know, if I, would, I would probably say something like that would probably be the third point if I had to try to summarize it. I would probably say the third point that I'm getting here is learn how to tell your story in a way that causes people to act. It causes them to act, think, and behave in the way that you want them to, to behave, you or your organization. And I think if you do that, you know, and you continue to grow, continue to learn it, continue to learn. The, the, the best thing, the best way to get there, it, it's definitely one-on-one -on -one coaching. If I could go back all those years, if I could go back to 90, 1997, Christine, if I could go back to 1997, I wish that, that, that senior chief in the United States Navy who walked up to me, big tall guy, I wish he would have said, hey, you could become a motivational speaker. And in fact, here's the number to a coach, a real live person, a real live person, Christine Harper or Coach Ernie Davis, who's willing to work with you one on one and in person. I'd probably be like a Tony Robbins right now. I'd probably be Tony Robbins or, or Les Brown. <laughs> it's possible, and it's and it's not over. So as long as you're breathing, it's yeah. possible. <laughs> yeah, it's always possible. You know, I I did I did discover something else in that though. You know what I discovered? I discovered through all of that research. I told you the thousands of hours of research, the writing of the book. You know what I really learned? As I learned that I love speaking and I love talking with, at conferences, but what I really love doing is helping speakers like yourself. Mm -hmm. Speakers like you who are willing to YouTube and search for this video on YouTube and who are willing to find and watch this video on Facebook, helping you to rise to your full potential so that you can make a whole lot of money. That's what I learned. That's what I really like to do. I like to stand in the back, Christine, and I like to coach and help other people do that. I, I enjoy that as well. It's interesting because when you think about all the life experience you've accumulated, I mean, I have, I could probably easily go pull out a box of books about public speaking, mm -hmm. things that I studied and things that I tried to learn on my own. But once I started working with a coach, I was able to pinpoint the things that were going to make me better the things that were going to allow me to share my gifts and talents uh, more readily. So I think that a, a working with a coach one-on-one -on -one was probably the fastest way mm -hmm. to improve my public speaking. Yeah, that, that's definitely it. That's definitely it. If I, had to, if I had to wrap it up before we get out of here today, 
you know, if I had to wrap it up before we get out of here today, if I, I want to give them that list one more time. If, is, is it okay if I do that, Christine? Can I give them that list one more time? So I would say that list for all for you. I'll give you time to write it down. Number one, continue to expand your knowledge base. Continue to grow. Continue to seek out opportunities to improve your presentation skills. Number two, utilize your resources. There are countless resources. You, you know, you can work with a coach. There's Toastmasters. There's your public library. There's this awesome book that Ernie, you know, Ernie did here, 11 Steps to Powerful Presentations and Public Speaking. You know, there's organizations like the John Maxwell team. There's TEDx talks. But I don't think anything compares to one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'd love to tell these folks, how, I'd love to tell them how they can get a hold of you, Christine, and work with you one-on-one because -on -one, you're awesome. I know you're one of the best. But the third point that I would say, learn how to tell your story in a way that causes people to act, to act, think, and behave in the way that you desire. You do that, and you're going to be an awesome speaker. You're going to be an awesome speaker. You're going to impact and influence a whole lot of lives, and you're going to have a huge impact on a lot of the things that's going on in the world. That's why I do this. I'm here too. Everybody keep growing. What are we gonna talk about next week, Christine? Oh, you stumped me. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew you were gonna ask me that before I got here. And I said, I better look at my list because I have a whole bunch of stuff that I wanna talk about. So we're gonna keep that one uh, a secret. All right, so we're just gonna say, hey, <laughs> join us next week. Join us next week. Join us next week. Hashtag, what is it? Thursday, public speaking Thursdays. Hashtag, public speaking Thursdays. And we're going to make something good happen. Till next time.